Hello and welcome to Vincent's. Today we will be looking at the first episode of the new series, Rose. I would like to apologise in advance and say that Sin and Cloister are the same thing. That annoying alarm clock. Jackie's position never really gets explained. She clearly has no job, she doesn't look like she has a disability, so that must mean that she's depending on Rose for all the bills. So how does she survive when Rose isn't around? I can't hang about because they're closing the shop. But surely they wouldn't lock up until everyone, including the person they've just sent back with the lottery money, is out of the shop though. Hello? Going towards a creepy noise cliche. She's now said Wilson about seven times in the last minute. This sounds a lot more like Castaway. I'm in this door closing and sealing on its own cliche. Run. Something about the doctor's entrance is just so fantastic that I have to take a sin off. Sorry guys. Quick note, it will be important later, please note that that is definitely a right arm. And when it gets pulled off in a second you'll see it is bent at the elbow. No sin yet, just wanted to point that out. Whoever they are, when Wilson finds him he's gonna call the police. Who's Wilson? Chief electrician. Wilson's dead. Hang on, Wilson's chief electrician? The door said CEO, which I assume meant for uh, chief executive officer, aka the big boss. But. No, apparently not. So why does the chief electrician get the lottery money? I mean, I haven't really worked in shops, but surely that wouldn't go to an electrician. Also, just looked it up. Nowhere is the letters CEO associated and recognisable as chief electrician. Go and have your lovely beans on toast. Don't tell anyone about this, because if you do, you'll get them killed. I'm the doctor, by the way. What's your name? Rose. Nice to meet you, Rose. Run for your life! Funny scene and all, but why is he wasting time coming back for pointless introductions when he is currently in the middle of blowing up shop? And if you have a close look, you will see that the arm is now a left arm and it is straight, not bent. Perfect timing in the explosion, the exact second she turns away. Apparently there are two shops called Henrik's that burnt down today. The one that Rose works at that doesn't have a C in it, and the one on the news which does have a C in it. You out? Beth, she's alive. Wow, Jackie is such a drama queen in this episode. What are you drinking tea? No, no, that's no good, that's no good. You're in shock, you need something stronger. All right. Now come on, you deserve a proper drink. We're going down the pub, you and me, my tree, how about it? Is there a match on? No, I'm just thinking about you, babe. There's a match on it, man. Well, that's not the point, but we could catch the last five minutes. And on the exact flip side, we've got Mickey, who doesn't even seem to give a shit. And the arm is once again right and bent. <laughs> that infuriating alarm. Ah, but she's now got to go into British benefits, which means that she's going to have to jump through countless hoops that the government have made to make you wish you were working so that you would actually have more time to spare. Good at shops. She deserves compensation. Oh, we're talking millions. Um, <clears throat> I'm in my dressing gown. Yes, you are. There's a strange man in my bedroom. Yes, there is. Where anything could happen. No. We love Nine for a reason, and he has just proven those exact reasons. That, combined with Jackie's face and reaction, is worth taking a sin off. It said on the news they found a body. Only one? Bearing in mind the suddenness and size of the explosion, the, close, the closeness to closing time, and the fact that people would have thought Rose were in there so they would have still been searching the building for her, then there would have been a lot more than just Wilson dead. Everything. Maybe not. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Tommy 
he's trapped that out. Give a man a plastic hand. Of course, someone made a joke about it earlier, so now it can't be a real danger. Anyway, I don't even know your name. Doctor, what was it? The correct phrasing is Doctor Who. Really, the exact moment that the noise starts in the other room is the exact moment Jackie starts the hairdryer. This is the first example in Modern Era Who that the sonic screwdriver is the magic wand of the series. I'm sending it and I'm sending it again for how often it gets done in the future. Armless. Sin number one, he can't be that sure that it's dead. Sin number two, technically it has an arm, so it isn't armless. And sin number three, that pun is awful. Who are you? Told you, the doctor. Yeah, but doctor what? Just Once doctor. again, the correct doctor. terminology is oh. Doctor Who. This morning, I was tracking it down, it was tracking me down. If you need the hand that much that you need to track it down, why did you let Rose take it in the first place? Also, bearing in mind that Rose took the arm, why didn't you expect to see her again when you arrived at the house? Well, who else is there? I mean, you lot, all you do is eat chips, go to bed and watch telly. Hey, that's racist! And a bit accurate. Well, no. It's not a price war. <laughs> they want to overthrow the human race and destroy you. Damn, that escalated quickly. Still she was close enough and looking in the right direction to be able to see the TARDIS dematerializing. At the very least, she would have arrived when it was halfway through the phasing in and out bit. Any excuse to get in the bedroom? Don't read my email! Mickey, you idiot. That is gonna make her read your emails. First of all, Searchwise.net is not a real search engine. Second of all, even if it was, anybody would use Google or Yahoo or Ask Jeeves into even in 2005, they were still going. And third of all, what the hell is she expecting when she searches doctor? I mean, come on, how vague can you get? Three sins. And finally, Clive knows how to word it. However, it's a very forced wording and not a way it would get worded in one language, so it's still going to be a sin. Yellow Beetle. He's not coming in. He's safe. He's got a wife and kids. Yeah, who told you that? He did. That's exactly why internet lunatic... Ah, good old-fashioned internet paranoia. How I remember those days. You read a website about the doctor. She's a sheep. Why is she happy about that? I mean, I'm glad that there's a person that is happy with their husband spending time with a young female, but still, it seems odd that she's happy about the fact that it's a she. Why does that matter? That's your doctor there, isn't it? That's your doctor? Does that mean that he knows about the different regenerations? If so, why doesn't he show that on the website or whilst talking to Rose? If he doesn't know about the regenerations, why does he say it like that as if the, he knows that the doctor's going to look different? Why did the person put out a nearly empty wheelie bin? We just saw him put it out a second ago, so it's not that the bins have been taken. Thank God help. First of all, why is he not shouting for help? He knows Rose would hear him if he shouted loud enough, as well as people in the other houses. Second of all, if you watch now, he's doing a 180 turn, but now it's completely straight, connecting him in the bin. Burping bin. Who do you think he is? I think he's the same man. I think he's immortal. I think he's an alien from another world. All right, he's a nutter. Off his head, complete online conspiracy freak. Random person solves mystery perfectly, and the main character disregards them as not a cliche. Pizza. Pizza. Or Chinese. 
Pizza. Okay, I'm not gonna assume Rose for not assuming we can use plastic here because she's quite distracted. But if anyone drives a car like that, I'm getting out whether they're plastic or not. And seeing as it's now dark out and it was mi and it was middle of the day last time we saw them, I'm now gonna sin her for not noticing that Mickey is plastic. But you can trust me, sweetheart, babe. Sugar. Babe, sugar. Cause that's all I really wanna do, sweetheart. Sugar. Babe, babe, sugar, sweetheart. Your champagne. We didn't order any champagne. Where's the doctor? He is creaking. <laughs> Anyway. Don't think that's gonna stop me. First off, Rose didn't break the glass in that fire alarm, the alarm would not have gone off. Second of all, it took Rose setting off the fire alarm for the people to have the common sense to run away from the morphing monster that's just had a head pull off and still talking and swinging around like a wild maniac. And finally, RIP to the best Mickey in this episode. He's gonna follow us. The, assembled odds of the TARDIS to to is beautiful. So beautiful I'm not gonna sit off because they have done a fantastic job with this beautiful, stunning, amazing TARDIS which only has one handrail going into the door. You see, the arm is too simple. And now there are two handrails, one on either side of the door. We've moved. Does it fly? Disappears there and reappears here. You wouldn't understand. Really? Because it's very yeah, simple to understand, like just from the explanation you've just given us. Because I'm busy trying to save the life of every stupid ape blundering about on top of this planet. All right. Hey, that's oh, racist! Hey. An alien. How comes you sound like you're from the north? Lots of planets have a north. Actually, all planets have a north. And a south, and an east, and a west. Even if they don't acknowledge them, they're still there. It's just a signal. What's it look like? Like a transmitter. Round and massive. Somewhere slap bang in the middle of London. A huge metal circular structure. Like a dish. Like a wheel. Radial. Close to where we're standing. Must be completely invisible. What? The Doctor's not that stupid, the only reason they've got this whole scene is partial comic relief and partial so that Rose can seem smarter. Note that big red bus right there that's just going past them. Nowhere to be seen. And they're back again. Plastic all over the world, every artificial thing waiting to come alive. The shop window dummies, the phones, the wires, the cables. The breast implants. Seriously, Rose's go to thing the when phones, everything phones, plastic's coming to life the is. The breast implants. That thing down there, the liquid rose, it can talk. So, Mickey can hear it without ever having been in the TARDIS or touched the TARDIS, yet Rose can't understand it, despite having been in the TARDIS. And to be fair, the TARDIS should already be translating for Rose, whereas Mickey should have no assistance. If I might observe, you infiltrated this civilization by means of warp shunt technology. So, may I suggest with the greatest respect that you shunt off? That seems to be some sort of pun, but it's really not funny. So, either an unfunny pun or a bad pun. Take your pick. I am talking! And I'm not listening! The previous scene will never happen. Convenient bad signal is convenient. So many responses, so few sins. Okay, let's go. End of the world? No, that's not until the next episode. It's the end of the world as we know it. Oh please, it's episode one of a series. There's no way on earth they're going to kill off the world. And finally, it wouldn't actually kill the world. The world would survive, it'd just be, you know, all the humans that would be there. Take your pick of any one of those sins. It's true. Everything I read, all the stories, it's all true. Normally, this would be a sin for the person that knows too much dies first, but just the look on his face, the realisation, the recognition, and the resignation negates the sin completely. Get out, Rose! Just get out! Run! The stairs have gone! 
how convenient. There are three brides attacking Jackie. In this shot, all three have their hands open. In this shot, another one opens her hand. So there must be at least four, yet there are only three. Also, the fact that the brides wait for the traditional 20 seconds or so for no reason before shooting, just so that Rose can stop them in time. So just to clarify, the survival of the world relied on the fact that the Auton just stood there for ages holding the anti-plastic out rather than moving it to a safe place or disposing of the item which the only use is really in stopping the Autons so that Rose could conveniently ride in and throw the anti-plastic into the nesting consciousness using a superb aim because she got the bronze in some school competition. That's convenience to the max! This box isn't just a London op, you know, it goes anywhere in the universe. Free of charge. Don't. He's an alien, he's, he's a thing. Mickey is he's really thing. pathetic in this episode. I mostly ignored it, but by this point it's earned a sin. That last line just pushed him over hey, the edge yeah, to patheticness. Go, uh... Okay, bonus round. So, for this one, we've got our first bonus is minus one sin for the ninth Doctor. He was introduced amazingly, managed to keep us through the episode, and he managed to immediately prove himself as the Doctor within a single episode. Second bonus, minus one for Rose, she really is great. She might turn south later, up, but here she was brilliant. Great introduction, and minus one more, as this was the one that started them on Near Earth Who. This episode hadn't have been so great, it wouldn't have lasted until today, and Doctor Who would have just been a whim of the past again. So, that means that the sin total is... 64, with a fate of death by breast implants. 